everyone, thanks for tuning in to this week's video. My name's Ruth and if you are new to my channel it's lovely to have you here. Um, we're doing like a lockdown couple special this week. Um, we thought it would be fun seeing as we're just like both in the house together with um, limited things to do that um, we do a couples video because we think it's really important. We've been talking a lot about how we can manage relationships when we are in the house together a lot more than we normally would. Yeah, it's pretty challenging. Um, we've lived together, well, not only lived together, but actually worked together for years and we've actually been working from home together for the past four years. So in that time, we've kind of, yeah, we've had some challenges along the way, but I guess we've come up with some tools and techniques along the way to sort of help us sort of manage our own expectations, our own feelings, how we can have a bit of a time out and stuff like that. So. I guess it seems like Ruth's been like, come on the video with me and, and talk to me. She's, I'm, I'm like, no, I don't want to come on, but um, I'm here. And, um, and this is Rob, by the way. I think I've talked about Rob in quite a few of my videos, but yeah. And um, yeah, so we we still fight. Like, this is not a video to say that like we've got it all mastered. No, definitely not. All mastered. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, we've had some big, big arguments over time, I'd say. But I think, you know, it's healthy to argue as well. And I think it's just acknowledging that. I think sometimes we let things build up and it's it's actually how we express how we're feeling that's the most important thing and to do it in a way without sort of making us directing that too much on the other person and making them feel like getting there and then it triggers them and makes them feel defensive so yeah yeah so what we thought would be helpful is we kind of we were on the sofa before and we've not overthought this we just wanted it to be genuine so we've got a few tips uh, and as rob just touched on one of the things that we find really helpful is that obviously like I think there's this meme that's been out this week where it's like um, it's this guy and woman sat on the sofa and the speech bubble that's like added to the woman is could you blink any louder you cunt sorry um, and we were really laughing about it because it's so true like sometimes like Rob will eat an apple and I'll just want to like put an axe in his head because it'll be like really noisy and annoying and it's in those situations where you can almost feel it rising up and sometimes it feels like it's like it's impossible not to let it out but what we try and do and like fail probably I don't know maybe like even 50% of the time 30% of the time but even if it's like half the time you're successful it's just to like take a little time out it's like okay I'm gonna go and get a bath or I'm just gonna go and make something in the kitchen or I'm just gonna go and call someone and try and like step away before you blurt out that thing that then takes you about like a few hours or a day to, to backtrack on. And what you tend to do as well, we already know that when you actually do react and you say stuff that you don't necessarily mean to, you're just saying that your mind's just getting triggered. You know, you can then like cause all sorts of crap from it and you can end up, you know, going down some pretty bad paths and it's unnecessary really. So it's just sort of like trying to just nip the thing in the bud and one thing that helps us a bit as well is like sometimes we'll know how we're each other's sort of feeling so the other person will turn to them and be like how are you, feel? you feeling okay and I, I think it's that in them moments rather than saying yeah I'm fine it's like actually no um you know I'm actually really struggling today and if you set them expectations from the beginning to say how you're actually feeling then you know you can sort of like you know I don't know the other person's a bit more understanding of that yeah, I think, I think that's right, like having, you know, if you wake up and you know you've woken up on the wrong side of the bed or you're just like struggling that day, like yesterday I was really struggling and then today I feel better, but there's no rhyme or reason to it sometimes, it's just like, but to say to you, the person you're living with, whether that's like a friend, a flatmate or your, your husband or your partner or whatever, just to say, oh, just to let you know, like if I seem a bit off today, I've just woken up, I feel really rubbish. So just sort of like setting that expectation. And when you said before about like sometimes when you say something like somebody's eating that apple and you're just like, oh, could you eat that apple any louder? We just shut up or whatever. Like it can sometimes, that apple isn't really the issue. Like it tends to be that there's stuff going on deeper inside and talking about that easy thing, like you, know, you didn't put the bin out or you said you were gonna do this. Like it tends to be that there's there's deeper stuff underlying within that, and if you can like try and be aware of your own feelings and be like, oh, I'm getting really kind of annoyed and I'm projecting a lot of this feeling that I'm having onto my partner, and try and say to them like, you know, 
oh, I'm finding things really difficult at the moment and I've got all these feelings coming up and I'm feeling angry and I'm feeling like I'm not appreciated. Like, you know, to try and have those conversations and own the feelings rather than saying, you didn't do this, you don't do this for me. Kind of trying to like flip it and say, I feel this way, so you're owning it. And then the other person probably will have, not all the time, but will probably have a better reaction to that because they won't feel like you're attacking them. Yeah, totally. And the thing as well is like, what we've got this moment now is like, we're all going to be stuck indoors a lot more with our loved ones. And we're not going to have um, all the distractions that we'd normally have, whether that would be to go out to a concert or you might watch the football or be going out and seeing other people. So we're really going to be like, you know, really like, glued together and we don't know how long this is you know this is you know we're at the end of march now and it, this could be months that it could be like this we don't really know so in them times of when it's slowing down things will come naturally come up more to the surface because we won't be having all them outside distractions so it's being even more conscious and aware of them times because it's most likely going to even be more challenging so it's just being yeah it's just being aware of, of what might come up and not to take it too personal if the other person is finding it tough or even if you're finding it tough as well. Yeah, that's that's good advice and, and I think you were saying about like having all those distractions and also as well like obviously we can distract ourselves and that can be a negative, but also as well like for for us, you know, like being able to go out and, and do like fun hobbies and like go and see other people is something that really like keeps you going and and we like I talk about this a lot in my other videos as well is that you can't expect your partner to give you everything like you know we have this expectation that our partner is going to be able to fulfill all our needs so now more than ever it's really important whether you're like a technophobe or not is to try and embrace like the new sort of technologies and how we can like connect with our friends whether that's through like zoom calls or facetiming um, and even just like picking up the phone and having a phone conversation and that really helps so like today I talked to my friend earlier and we had a chat for a good like half hour and just having like that female um, support and being able to talk to her about things that I can't always talk to to rob about um, and vice versa you know like we can't talk to each other about everything so now more than ever it's important to really value the, that family and that friendship and if you've let friendships drop off like now can be a really nice time to reconnect with people i think a lot of people are gonna need a lot more support and a lot of people have got the time now you know you can you can almost guarantee you reach out to someone to say, do you want to catch up? Do you want to have a quick call? Or even if it's just a normal phone call rather than the Zoom, like people are not going to be like, oh, I'm, I'm too busy. It's like, yeah, and you can actually have more sort of, well, more deeper conversations and you can sort of like give each other a bit more time rather than thinking, oh, I've got to go do this, got to do this next. So I think in this time, we've got this opportunity to almost slow down and to nourish ourselves a lot more. But then another point, which I think is really good one, and I, I first heard about it when it was some people who live in these tiny homes, and and, and like they would live in like these 12 by six meter uh, places. And one of the tips that they use to each other, because you know, if, you, if you're around each other so much, you can end up sort of just naturally getting on each other's nerves. So their technique was to say, be really grateful and say please and thank you a lot more. Because you know what it's like, if you make someone a cup of tea, and even if they, they just, you know, they could be in the middle of something else. They could be watching something or on the phone and they don't even think to say, oh, thank you for that. And then you're walking away thinking, you know, something's like, oh, they could have done this. So straight away, not only say that, but if we can be even more grateful and say even more pleases and more thank yous along the way, then I think that'll just help things to be a bit more harmonious. Because like we say, how long are we going to be like this for? And I think we're going to find out whether we're going to be even closer through this time or who knows we might realize that we don't even like each other as much anymore because we've spent so much time but yeah please and thank yous go a long way yeah um i was listening to graham norton on the radio he's like a, um, a presenter comedian in the uk and he was saying like all the couples that have had their weddings cancelled and are now stuck at home like how devastated they are and people were, like texting in telling about the weddings and he was like do you know who I feel really sorry for he was like the couples that were right on the cusp of saying they wanted to divorce and they wanted to separate and he was like you're in it now you're in it for the next few months 
Um, so yeah, it, it is a little bit like it can go either way. Uh, but just to stress like, you know, if you do have like some massive like balls up, like huge arguments as well, that's okay and don't feel guilty and think that everyone else is like, you know, doing Tai Chi and writing plays and just doing loads of online yoga classes when I think that's sometimes how it can seem on social media and people just like walking their dogs in beautiful settings and it doesn't show all the crap like that goes on behind closed doors. Like just the other day, like we went to do the daily exercise and we just had an argument and we were walking around and we were like, why are you being like that? And um, we were trying to like talk it out. And by the time we came back from the walk, we were we, on a better ground. Although we've had a few, to be honest, the first few days in lockdown, I think that's what it was. We, we kind of got used to it a bit now, but the first few days, as we were about to go out for the walk, something got triggered and then we just basically argued all the way around the walk. But at least it's a good time to do it. And actually going out and walking, often this is something that I've heard that's really good is if you've got something you want to get off your chest during the talk, if you go walking, because sometimes you're not just going to sit down to someone and say, can I speak to you about something about how I'm feeling? It can be quite challenging looking at them directly in the eyes. But if you're going on a walk and you're walking side by side, sometimes you can express a little bit more what's actually on your mind a little bit. And maybe we that's what comes out for us when we go on our walks a little bit. But the recent ones have been pretty good, and we're going to go out for one after this. So we'll, um, we'll let you know. Maybe Ruth will let you know in the, in the description if we if we have a kick off or something like that after it, afterwards. Yeah, we, we are definitely sure that we're gonna have some more kickoffs. But like, I think the main points like we've said just before we wrap the video up is, you know, being extra grateful and being like showing that gratitude for the little things that you do for each other, whether it's like a cup of tea in the morning or someone empties the dishwasher or someone just checks in and sees how you're feeling. Those things are really important. And then we talked about the owning your feelings, like not just saying you didn't do this, you don't do that, saying like, I'm feeling like this because of this. And so like taking some responsibility when you can. And like, what was the first one we said about the... I can't remember. <laughs> um, the first one we said was about trying to like have that like decompression when your blood is boiling that the person's doing something and it's really take, yeah, irritating take a minute. You. like you type really loud on the keyboard and you're like tch, tch. and sometimes i'm like oh my god so i just say i'm just gonna go in like um i need to make a call so i'm gonna go work in a different room i'm gonna go downstairs so because i know it's that's just all me that's not like you yeah. um i do think that you type quite loudly but that's another story we <laughs> staffed and just got some like sound sensitivity she's like I have we got a cat if misophonia that's what it's called. It's got a name, misophonia. Right. I don't like licking noises. My, mine's more to do with smells. Like I'm very sensitive to smells and boost more to noise. So. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, that's just us being weird. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed the video with us together. Um, I'll put on the screen now, like so you can see wh where Rob's channel is for his podcast. Um, so you can subscribe to his and take a look. And I'll put links below to some other stuff that you might find helpful and look after yourselves the catchphrase of coronavirus stay safe stay home take care um see you next time for another video thank you bye